Hello everyone! In this video we will show you Courtyard by Marriott Hotel in French Quarter of New Orleans and also tell you about World War II Museum and Art Garden and Floating Gallery. So let's get started! This time we spent three nights in New Orleans and we chose Courtyard by Marriott, that located on the corner of Iberville Street and Dauphin Street. By the way, it's only 5 minutes walk to Bourbon Street and 15 minutes walk to Jackson Square. Last time we stayed in Crown Plaza that we showed in our previous videos and in my opinion rooms in courtyard slightly better, bigger and more modern, that fits better for longer stay. Also prices for stay here usually lower. This is four star hotel that also has restaurant, bar and fitness center, which we never visit, and also space for meetings, weddings and social events. There is no pool here. Prices per night around $165 and only valet parking available for $45 per night. Have HBO. So you can watch Last of Us, third episode. Fridge. We put some coke there. This is empty. Coffee machine. Big, big bathroom with nice standing shower. Obviously, been re, uh, remodeled. Ironing board, luggage rack. TV, probably with HBO. Another TV. I didn't know this was like this, like a suite. Mm -hmm. Another luggage rack, big bed. Yep, pretty pretty and big bed. Beautiful view on the wall. And you can close that, show that door that you can close it to the suite. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna close that, it's pretty cool. Like that mechanism. And the view of the wall. <laughs> No, you could see kind of New Orleans outside. National World War II Museum, formerly known as the National D-Day Museum, is a military history museum located on the central business district of New Orleans, on Andrew Higgins Drive between Camp Street and Magazine Street. The Union Pacific train station is an immersive exhibit which allows guests to experience the sight, sounds and emotions of going to war. Upon arrival, visitors are given a dog tag card, and each one is assigned to a specific real American soldier. My soldier was Grant Ichikawa. He was Japanese-American sent to Gila River incarceration camp after Pearl Harbor attack happened. Also, it shows us his story as a U.S. Army volunteer and his service as a military translator in Australia and Philippines. Inside of the large atrium of Louisiana Memorial Pavilion, several aircraft are on display, including Supermarine Spitfire and Douglas C-47 Skytrain, suspended from the ceiling. The museum focused on the contribution made by United States to Allied victory in World War II. Also here you can learn about African-American community part in World War II and Executive Order 8802, banning discrimination in the defense industry on June 25, 1941. This order also set up Fair Employment Practice Committee in response to March on Washington. Another part of exhibition let you learn more about American women and their important roles during World War II, both at home and in uniform. Many of them gave in the name of the country their time, energy, and some of them even gave their lives. So why was this museum originally the D-Day Museum? And why is the National World War II Museum located in New Orleans? These two questions require one answer. New Orleanian Andrew Jackson Higgins and Higgins Industries. Higgins was a boat builder by trade and worked on the shallow draft vessels for use in local wetlands. He was able to modify this design into the Landing Craft Vehicle Personnel LCVP, that was first tested in New Orleans. The iconic landing boat used a D-Day landing and countless other operations. The restored LCVP is located on the museum grounds.
America's isolation from war ended on December 7, 1941, when Japan staged a surprise attack on American military installation in the Pacific. The most devastating strike came at Pearl Harbor, the Hawaiian naval base where much of the U.S. Pacific fleet was moored. In a two-hour attack, Japanese warplanes sunk or damaged 18 warships and destroyed 164 aircraft. Over 2,400 servicemen and civilians lost their lives. Through museum exhibition, you can retrace the trails that led from Pearl Harbor to Tokyo Bay, explore the evolving strategy for fighting relentless Japanese forces in Asia and Pacific, and examine cultural differences, logistical challenges, and the staggering range of extreme conditions that uh, confronted American military forces. The Guadalcanal or Green Hell exhibit in Pacific Satra Galleries features an immersive environmental narrative that draws the visitors into a towering palm jungle, following in the footsteps of American GIs as they battled heat, mosquitoes, diseases, dense vegetation and unfamiliar terrain, along with their ferocious enemies, in all-consuming, round-the-clock battle. Along with information stands, you can find interesting weapons exhibition. That include different firearms, pistols, rifles, submachine guns, and larger crew-served weapons like mortars and bazookas. Many of them have been donated by veterans or their family members. The most interesting and disturbing part of the museum for me was Trinity Project exhibit and bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki room. The nuclear genie once out of the bottle could not be put back in. The ever-present threat of nuclear option in the superpower standoffs of the Cold War defined global politics after 1945. Hiroshima and Nagasaki raised the specter of mutual assured destruction that has hunted the world into our present times. European theatre galleries include Desert War, Invasion of Sicily, Italian Campaign, Air War, D-Day Theatre, Invasion and Liberation of Northwest Europe, German Frontier Bunker, Battle of the Bulge, and Into the German Homeland Exhibition. It is also give a great uh, chronological explanation along with uh, journals, videos, interviews, and personal stories of the soldiers. The Battle of the Bulge Gallery with large-scale dimensional video and running audio of German and American voices evokes the chaos and danger of this costly battle. As visitors walk through the recreated winter forest over the camouflaged Opel staff car, abandoned by German army. The museum helped the economy of Louisiana substantially with a total of about $132 million annually. The museum also is one of New Orleans' biggest employers. It directly supports 300 jobs and indirectly supports another 142 jobs. Art Garden and Floating Gallery is an artist-owned and run open-air boutique art market that opens in the night time. You can find it in the Frenchman Street. It's nice and calm corner in the French Quarter where you can meet the local artists that are selling the creations.
I find out about New Orleans playing card company. They sell unique playing card decks and also beautiful prints, some of them related to the urban legends and scary stories of Louisiana, which I like a lot. Here you can find something unique to bring with you from New Orleans or enjoy some drinks in the nearby bars. Thank you for watching, hope this video was interesting, bye!